she, she can start off. Yeah, she is Dr. G. Kalvi Karasi, Associate Professor, Department of English, DARBCCC in College, and NIC 72. And uh, she's going to present a paper on the title, Nation and Gender in the Thousand Splendid Sons. Ma'am, the stage is yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank Please you. So yeah. Respected organizer, Dr. Mani Mori, respected chair, Dr. Manu, the co-presenters and the co-participants of the international conference. My greetings to you all. I'm very glad to participate. Actually, I was in the line as a first presenter of today due to the engagement in the college as the principal too. I was unable to join at the right time. Thank you so much and thank you, uh, Manu sir, for uh, Ending the session with me. Thank you. So uh, getting on with my presentation, the nation and uh, gender. Please give me a few minutes to share. Yeah, I hope uh, I'm audible and also my, the screen no, is. So the screen is yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we go. Uh, we go with the presentation. The paper is titled "Nation and Gender in the Thousand Splendid uh, Sons" by Khaled Hosseini. Uh, just for a few minutes, I will explain the plot of the novel quickly so that we could uh, get an understanding of what I'm mean by the rest of the things. So this is about the story of the war struck nation of Afghanistan and the three generations of women which forms the fabric of the novel, The Thousand Splendid Sons. So actually the novel debates over the idea of nation and gender, along with that what we could call as the gendered nation. So. Khalid Hussaini puts it in the postscript of his novel that he tried to speak through the novel the ordinary humanity behind their veils, their hopes, their longings, and their disappointments. Actually, Khalid Hussaini was very much unhappy that uh, in his first novel, The Kite Runner, uh, he was only projecting the male perspective of the nation and gender in uh, through the uh, novel Kaitrana, and he wanted to do justice by this novel, The Thousand Splendid Sons. So the theme of the novel is the how the characters internalize the nation's ideologies and culture, which actually conflicts with the individual's free will and their choice of living. So the rights of women are voiced through the two characters, Mariam and Leila, and the, the other minor characters. And it is seamlessly woven with the political history of Afghanistan and the entry of Taliban. The so, so whole story is a maze of cultural and historical puzzles. So, so the predominant concern, as I already explained to you, is about the ordinary humanity behind the veils. The title of the novel has been borrowed from Sabi Yazari's song titled Kabul with the phrase Thousand Splendid Sons in the poem, which metaphorically addresses the women of Afghanistan and the sufferings they have to experience. So the analysis takes it into three different phases. The first phase where we find the three characters, Nana, Jalil, and Mariam. Mariam is the child of uh, Nana and Jalil. Jalil uh, is already married with the, uh, I mean, the three wives and nine legitimate daughters. And Mariam is the illegitimate daughter born to Nana and Jalil. So the novel starts with a very startling remark 
that Maryam was five years old the first time when, he, when she heard the word Harami. So being the illegitimate child, Maryam, uh, but Maryam looks at her father as a man of vast knowledge. So here we are also taking into consideration that polygamy which is uh, being allowed and if it is accepted by his own family and people, and if the girl is from the hierarchical society, the cultural codes are changed and, and she is accepted. But Nana, being the maid in the family, was not given that, uh, that uh, title of being the legitimate wife, and Mariam faces the consequences. So Mariam's mother becomes psychologically sick. There is drowsiness, the frightening disorientation in her life and also the incoherent mumbling with which she always lives. So that is the picture of Mariam, sorry, Ma Nana, the mother there. And Jalil had been quite very uh, friendly, cooperative, and a very, very uh, affectionate father to Mariam during his occasional visits. But Nana always had a, a, a very unhappy and unfortunate idea, which she keeps telling Mariam. A man's heart is a wretched, wretched thing, Mariam. It is not like a mother's womb. It won't bleed. It won't stretch to make room for you. So just as a foregrounding of what would happen to Mariam's life. The second phase is when Mariam tries to gain entry into the family after the death of Nana. Nana hears that Mariam uh, walks uh, walks to uh, Jalil's house and Jalil's house doesn't accept it. Nana commits suicide and uh, so Mariam has to take her life along with her, uh, along with her father but the father doesn't uh, the father uh, doesn't accept her because the family doesn't accept. Immediately the family wants to um, outwit the people and she is married to Mariam at the very very young age is married to old Rashid, who is the shoemaker in, uh, in Kabul. So Rashid's, the second phase shows Rashid's perspective of life, which is very, very simple and religious, and but he doesn't have any inquiry on whether whatever he was following is male dominant. He doesn't intellectually get into all the details whatever the religion and the ways of life that had been observed by the common man had been followed by Rashid. So, but the patriarchal ideologies are for the women to be inside the regulatory structures of these formal institutions and Mariam has to face it. So Mariam's uh, life, which had a hope that she will join her father is shattered and she joins old Rashid on whom she has to take her husband without her choice. The third phase which comes up with Mariam, Rashid and Laila. So Mariam and Rashid lives her life for some time and she succumbs to all the expectations of Rashid. Laila is introduced in the novel. She comes as a refugee. Kabul is a very well developed advanced um, city and when Mariam walks away from her village and joins Rashid in Kabul she could see the modernized uh, Kabul the modernized society but yet she lives very quietly with Rashid Laila Laila gets uh, Laila enters into Kabul as a refugee and uh, she was in uh, love with Tariq who was crippled in the war due to the war and the entry of Taliban Laila uh, Tariq has to move from the place and again Laila come uh, is impregnated by Tariq and he comes to uh, Kabul and befriends this family Rashid and Mariam Rashid makes a very sly attempt and uh, but Le Rashid has to um, face it that uh, Laila carries the child of Tariq and uh, was named as Aziza, but Rashid doesn't know. But after uh, after a longer time, he comes to know that Aziza was the child of Laila and Tariq. So 
again we have the illegitimacy of Aziza for some time in the novel. So Rashida was disappointed by Maryam that he marries Layla, where Maryam comes up with a uh, remark, I'm too old to fight with you to Rashid. But Rashid takes it light saying that polygamy had been accepted and uh, he was a little too late. So the observations that I could make uh, uh, or share with you is this. The culture itself makes the women folk op oppressed, marginalized, and also unrepresented lot because the gendered nation clearly says that this is the um, uh, culture, the traditional culture. And uh, as we could see that even Rashid was very sincere to the culture which he had been internalizing for a longer time, perhaps for centuries that Afghanistan uh, had been facing. And also the entry of Taliban um, forces made a great difference there, uh, coming up with more of a traditional representations. The disruptive behavior of Rashid masquerades as culture and as strategic domains of power. The persistent structures of inequality or confining walls that denies progress. Polygamy is allowed if it is accepted by his own people and if the girl is from the hierarchical society. Cultural codes are more liberating for men in the patriarchal society of Afghanistan. But these codes are seen as entanglements which are suffocating for women. So education had been had the anti, sorry, emancipatory tool for social and economic well-being of women. We find several instances in the novel where the young girl Mariam cries to go to the school to receive education that he she says that I wanted to have a new notebook where I could go on on with my uh, scribbles and I love to see the lines being drawn on the paper. So she pictures herself in a classroom with other girls of her age. Mariam longed to place a ruler on a page and draw important looking lines. But she was denied education, being uh, the, judged as the illegitimate child, Harami. And uh, hence, the education has not been uh, even provided to her. And she was at a loss. But with Laila, the opposite thing happens, that she comes from the modernized Kabul. And the parentage had been so good that she gets the education. And Laila makes a great difference to the lives of uh, everyone. So Mariam kinship with Lila. Lila's power play transforms the story to emancipatory discourse against hegemonic ideologies of men. So Mariam and Lila ends Rashid's life as all they had endured for this one crowning moment, for this act of defiance that in the ensuing fight that we find that when Mariam and Lila wanted to move away and take their lives that Rashid gets into the fight and and uh, he uh, he dies so this act of defiance that would end the suffering of all the indignities that mariam uh, had been facing and also for lila to be an accomplice uh, there along with him which she denies so lila was able to see a better picture of whatever is happening to her life and also to mariam and the strange kinship, though Lila had been uh, had been uh, sharing uh, her life with Rashid, Mariam develops a wonderful kinship with Lila and also breeds the child Aziza. So this is what we could call as the immanence to transcendence. Mariam was executed by the Taliban's uh, after that, and Lila stands alone to take up her life, builds orphanage and schools in the memory of Mariam. Mariam is in Laila's own heart where she shines with the bursting radiance of a thousand splendid suns. Gendered nation makes the transition as the liberated nation in the eyes of Laila who could take it. Conclusion, there are multiple masculinities and um, there is, there is nothing which we could also blame men uh, as they had been internalizing the culture. 
but the but it has to be taken up in different levels for women to be freed uh, from all the traditional shackles all of which draw the patriarchal privilege but they have an uneven relationship to domination we could find jalil quietly dominating the life of uh, Mar- life of maryam and nana and uh, we find that there was a different type of domination that had been taken by rashid because of it. Uh, the religion and culture which he uh, comes up with and the control over women and also are held with unequal esteem by other men for old rashid what he had done is for jalil who had to take care of the very large family and doing justice for everyone uh, makes him see that whatever efforts had been taken by him has been justifiable so these are ma- multiple masculinities which we could see in the uh, in the novel so men's success and honor is viewed through the lens of their ability to dominate and violence or threats are strategically used to achieve this position over women teach them gender hierarchy and punish transgressions that was how nana's life was uh, punished for a transgression and uh, so she is so the many characters have to face the consequences the defeats but khaled hosseini wanted and uh, doesn't want them to be uh, defeated the, uh, through laila we could see a great transformation that is happening khaled hosseini wins it up with a very very positive note and giving hopes and uh, several other appointments for the for these characters and for the people so the defeats of the women characters are also the stories of victory behind the veil of these women there are thousand splendid sons thank you thank you ma'am uh, elvikari see ma'am for that erudite presentation for thank a change you, for a change you have shown the academic world that principals can also be good teachers and uh, good academicians uh, so it, it it was nice to listen to you just uh, since you were referring also to uh, the kite runner but especially you focused on uh, the 1000 splendid signs we know that uh, khalid hosseini's novels are more or less set in afghanistan so in any did you feel during any phase of your reading or any phase of your study that khalid hosseini is writing for a western audience that he is providing something for the western expansionist capitalist person to find fault with uh, the afghanistan with his own motherland to sell his books do you think that there is some grain in such a thought that some people have such a thought that he is like for example we said the same when we had a slum dog millionaire or when arundhati roy came up with god of small things that they are presenting their own country in a poor light so that they will get uh, accolades from the west did you feel something like that when you read these novels yeah so that was a wonderful perspective to share it has happened even with the white tiger with arvind adiga uh, where i could feel that there was more of it but when i look at the thousand splendid sons there might be a very slight trace of it but there was more of reformatory zeal which i could find with kaleto zainis uh novels whether with the kite runner and also with that so it was uh, not a uh, biased one but uh, both with the kite runner and the thousand splendid sons uh, ending up in a very positive note and also more of a reformatory zeal that i could find in his writings so uh, i could not bring them uh, bring him under the list of what has happened <laughs> uh, what had been written by the other novelists so that is very true uh, your observation is very true that we find many you know, many writers 
writing for the western audience and for their um, so, sort of a marketing strategy that they try to use. But with Kaleido Zaini, personally, I don't, uh, with my reading, I don't find that. 